Can you it still sounds, Hey Phil stills the still yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready guys? Hey man, turn, turn that around. Oh, turn, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. Perfect. Awesome, thanks guys. All right guys, so they're just here for the picture they're gonna take off and we're gonna have Dean Pease and Matt up uh, for the presser, okay? You guys are welcome to the stage. Watch on TV. <laughs> right. You can get the center seat, man. Hey, Dean, can you go on the left sure. foot? <laughs> well, I just. Uh, Kind of uh, reiterate what I think John and Ozzy have already said about Matt was we are extremely pleased to have this guy be a Baltimore Raven. Well, you know, it's been a long process and uh, evaluation with the scouts and with Eric and Joe and and everybody involved and, and uh, you know, a lot of guys that you look at. And uh, this is a guy that we had targeted a long time ago here and, and uh, to have it kind of come to fruition yesterday was kind of kind of neat sitting in the in the room watching everything kind of fall in place and kind of crossing my fingers and a lot of things as you do when it gets down to that that pick and uh, the fact that Matt's name was there um, I just couldn't be more excited I think he adds a dimension to our defense as as you all know I mean it's no secret with Ed leaving we, we lost a very very great Hall of Fame player and uh, you know, we need somebody to come in and, and uh, fight for that spot. And uh, Matt knows it's not going to be given to him. He's got to earn it. But this is a guy that we have the utmost faith in and coming in and, and giving us the things that, that we look for in a, in a football player. Guy can run, guy can cover, and most of all, he can hit. And he is uh, the thing that what I like the most about him watching on film is there's a dying art in college football in the secondary, and it's called tackling. And this guy has that art. And uh, we are very, very excited to have this guy. Matt? Yes, I mean, a very exciting moment. Uh, I can't, it's, it's so exciting, man, it's hard to explain. Um, having an opportunity to play for the world champs and uh, great coaches and uh, great players, um, and having an opportunity to come in and do the great things the Hall of Fame, uh, future Hall of Fame, uh, Ed Reed did. I mean, just coming in and just and just working and continuing to improve and getting better and and just being a great Raven and win championships and that the Ravens are used to doing. Matt, uh, we're watching you watch yourself just now. Uh, today is about your future. We know that, but what were you thinking of when you were watching? Uh, watching? I mean, it's, it's it, it melts my heart, man. Just to just to watch what I did in college and uh, just have an opportunity to play at the next level, a lot, opportunity a lot of people don't have, and opportunity a lot of people didn't take advantage of. And I mean, it's an honor, man. Like I said, it melted my heart because knowing what I came from and and everything I overcame, and just to take it positive, just instead of making it a negative and turning the positive motivation and, and making who I am today. Matt, you just mentioned some of the stuff you overcame. How, how much did that sort of shape you? Um, and how much did you use football as a release to kind of deal with some of the, the, you know, the struggles there? I think football was was my relief, and um, being able to use the energy and, and and be able to use it the right way instead of negative, you know what I'm saying? Just going, having it, being able to go out on the field and using and using that energy, and and just it, it gave me an edge. And um, just my family, it made it made me realize how important family was. Losing siblings, and that's why I go out and do it every day for my family, and because uh, I know they they always had my back. They supported me since growing up, and and knowing I was young and losing, and they was always there for me and show support. So I go out every day and work for them and, and try to put a smile on their face. Matt, what was it like growing up in that neighborhood? How tough was it? How difficult was it to overcome and kind of uh, avoid some of the pratfalls other people fell into? I mean, just it, it was very tough. I mean, I had, uh, uh, like I said, a strong support system with my family. Um, I have uh, I looked. I had a, a big brother to look up to. I mean, he showed me the ropes. He showed me how to overcome things. And I mean, it's 
like I say, man, I can't explain how excited I am, man. Like I said, I, I mean, it's a lot of a lot of a lot of kids my age that been through the same thing that lost siblings and and just took it negative and then used it as motivation and made it positive and and used it as positive energy and things like that. So I feel like it, it helped. It helped me going through that thing. Helped me. Helped me mature. Helped me grow and just helped me realize how important family was and doing it for the family. Matt, how, how close were you to kind of going down a different path with your life? You know, the path that a lot of guys from your area did go down, and, and what really directed you? Was it your mother kind of transferring schools, or what directed you to? I mean, it was just me knowing that, okay, I, understanding that, all right, I don't want to, I'm tired, I'm tired of the frowns and the tears and, and the funerals and things like that, and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn this around. I'm, I'm going to do this the right way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn the frowns into smiles. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure my family happy. I'm going to make sure... Uh, the happiness overcome all the the tragedy and, and the adversity. So that's like I said. That's why I go out to work every day to put a smile on my family face and make them make them happy and make them smile instead of frowning and having funerals and tears and also just tears of joy. That's all I think about. Is just giving them tears of joy. What was the process like last night? Just watching and waiting, and you see two safeties go ahead of you. I mean, they gave me a chip on my shoulder, seeing those two safeties. Uh going ahead of me, but then again, I'm happy they went ahead of me because, I, I mean, I got opportunity to play for the, the world champs, and uh, so, like I said, I mean, it was a, it was a very nerve-wracking uh, experience. I mean, I was ready to go. I mean, the whole process, I was like, man, I want to find out where I want to go. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to play again. I mean, I felt, I felt jobless. I wasn't going to school. I didn't have a job, so I mean, I was like, I'm ready. I'm ready, so, I mean, I feel it was a very good process, man, a very learning, a learning experience, and I learned a lot of things, so, man, I'm looking forward to this. Were you comfortable watching it uh, for from your own confines as opposed to being in New York? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean the, U the, the New York opportunity was a big opportunity a lot of people don't have. But I was, like I said, I'm a very family, I'm a fair oriented guy. So, I mean, it was all about family. So I felt I felt good just being there with the family and getting a phone call with the family right there. Matt, what were your meetings with the Ravens like beforehand? And what, how were you, was it the team you thought I mean, I was I was hearing I was hearing a lot of good things from the Ravens, and I knew the family ties, so I knew that had something to do with it and things like that, and uh, the family relationships. So I mean, and to come by a meeting uh, with the Ravens, I, that went well too. So I mean, I didn't I didn't have the I didn't think it would be the Ravens, but I mean, I had an idea because I mean the family ties, and then with with Ed leaving and things like that. So it was I mean. It was so it wasn't something that I knew, but I had an idea. I had an idea. Matt, the things the family ties aside, um, as a hard hitting football player, uh, and he played with some other hard hitting football players, the teams like the Ravens, I even let's say the Steelers, teams with really hard hitting defensive reputations. Do those become your favorite teams or or, or, or do you, do you take, take special notice as a young player of those teams? I mean, I take I take a lot of notes. Just seeing like just seeing the, the the playoff the Super Bowl last year with Paul and, and Ray Lewis and uh, and Reed just yeah, I mean hitting people and I mean just the great the aggressive defense and the the, the hard defense that the Ravens always had. I mean, it's something I looked up to because that's my style of play, playing hard and, and being that um playing smash my football. So I mean, I've always been a fan of that uh the tough Ravens defense. This question is for Dean. Uh, Dean, do you see him competing with James Idabo at strong safety primarily where you start him out and then maybe see him interchangeable later on or do you want to cross train him at both free and strong? Right well, we've already talked about it. Um, I got him upstairs an hour ago as soon as he got in. <laughs> and really, they, all those guys are interchangeable. You know, there's no nobody has specific, you're, the, you're a strong safety, you're a free safety, you're this, what, you're a safety. And so you need to know both. He needs to know nickel. He needs to know a lot of things there on defense to see where he ends up fitting. And just as they all do, they all are cross-trained. You know, nobody's really kind of, okay, you're in competition just as a strong safety and Michael Huff, you're just a free safety. They're all safeties. And then they all need to find out where they fit and where their role is and what they're best suited for. Along with nickel, you got Webby, you got Corey, you got Asa. You got Matt. You got a bunch of guys. So that's why when you do all that, you always have competition at those spots. Nobody's just specifically geared in or pigeonholed into one spot. They're pigeonholed into the whole secondary, and then you find out who can play and where they fit and how they how they fit in each each call, each defense. A guy could be a nickel on one play and a safety on the next play if that's the best place to put him in that situation. So he knows he's going to – we talked already upstairs about – 
known a lot of different spots, and that's one of the things I like about him. I know his background. I know the kind of, uh, you know, uh, defense that he comes from in college that's not just a vanilla defense that they play one coverage. They play a lot of things. Will Muschamp, I know really, really well. And, uh, you know, I know this guy knows a lot of football. So there's a, another additive, another thing about him that, that we thought was a very big positive. Pat, can you talk about your ability to turn and run with the tight ends in this division now? You got Tyler Eford coming in, you got Heath Miller, you got a Jermaine Gresham, and it seems to be one of your strengths is being able to cover and, and as well as playing in the box. I'm, I'm very high, highly confident in my, uh, I mean, I've been, I like this off season, I've been training as a corner. And uh, I got the advice from my brother. I mean, he told me how important that is. And with the, uh, I mean, just the, the transitioning, you know, guarding the fast, the bigger guys. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to rely on my technique. I'm going to keep on improving. And, like, I'm going to keep on improving, like, working as a corner. And and, and I'm very, high, I'm highly confident in what I can do in that situation. Coach, before the draft, a bit was made about Matt's height. Why does he make that irrelevant? Why does it not matter how tall he is? This, you asking me? I didn't hear the first part of it. Why Excuse is it me. irrelevant how tall he is? Well, I don't think it's irrelevant. If he was five foot two, that'd be relevant. <laughs> so I don't think height's irrelevant. I just think his height's irrelevant. Uh, I don't know how Troy, how tall, how tall, how tall is Troy Palomala? Five eleven. Yeah, five eleven on a good day, you know. <laughs> and you know, I'm just saying. I think the thing of it is, there are certain guys. There's tall guys that play short, and there's short guys that play tall. There's slow guys that play, play fast, and there's fast guys that play slow. So to me, that has nothing to do with that. It has, this guy plays in a great conference. Maybe uh, a great conference. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'd be politically really in trouble if I said something else. So, but, so he's used to playing against great competition. That's, that's another additive to me in watching, when you watch the film. It wasn't hard to put on a film and find a good football team that he was playing against. Most of them were. So the fact is, he's, he's seen that kind of competition. Everybody has, every football player has some weakness. They have strengths, they have weaknesses. And what they have to do is figure out how to overcome their weaknesses and use their strength then to overcome that weakness and play to their ability. Whether that, there was a play on there on his highlight. You know, it was down in the end zone, they took, somebody threw a fade ball up there and the guy went up. Now, did he go up and high point it? No, but he got, went up and got the ball out. That's what you got to do. So, to me, watching him play against a lot of big guys, uh, we studied that. That wasn't something that exactly, you know, we'd study that on every player that we looked at. So, it's not a concern. When it comes to the strengths and weaknesses, you, you have a reputation in college as being a heavy hitter, but knowing now at the professional level how much the league tries to protect players, do you have to refine your game at all or anything different? I feel like I won't let up a bit. I mean, I just rely on my technique. Like I say, I improve every damn practice, and I, I feel like it won't be a problem because I rely on my technique, and it, I, it won't slow me down a bit. Matt, as you went through the process and you know, everyone becomes an expert throughout the evaluations, you go through just getting ready for the draft. Is there anything you read or – Heard that motivated you and gave you an extra chip on your shoulder. Um, I went into the, the media thing. I, I really, I'm really not really. I was never into that because I mean it was. I mean, it, I mean it was too much going on for me to. I mean it's a lot of different uh, projections and opinions and things like that. So I try to stay away from the, all that. And um, I mean I just went out of work and just basically just knowing that coming to the next level, you got to continue to improve and you got to be consistent. So, I mean, I kept on getting better every day. And I, like I said, I, I tried to just keep my eyes out of the, the, the opinions, keep, keep away from the opinions and the predictions just so I can stay focused and, and know what I have to add. Matt, when you come to a team that let two veteran safeties go, let two starters go, do you come in and say, I expect to start? I wouldn't say that because I, I I want anything given. I mean, I feel like if it's given, I, I don't have. I mean, growing up, I was. I mean, I had to work through things, and my my parents and my brother always made me work and made me earn things. So, like I said, I don't, I don't want anything given because if it's given, I mean, it's not earned. So, I mean, like I said, I, with two great safeties leaving, I feel like it's it's a great opportunity for me to come in and and do and keep on and improve and do the great things that they did and, and win championships and win games. And you just, just start that number you want to wear. Um, me and Coach were just deciding that earlier. Maybe it might have to be 30, 31. 31, like, yeah, I like that number. Since 22 just taken. And just to backtrack to some of the stuff that you've overcome, Jay, just considering that and looking at some of the adversity that you've dealt with, how gratifying does that make it where you are now 
And is there any moment that sticks out that was particularly special during the course of the last couple of days, aside from just being drafted, but anything that sticks out that was particularly special? Just seeing my mom smile and the, the excitement of my mom and my family, just that, 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 that itself, just seeing how happy and excited they were. Like, they seemed more excited than I was. So that gave me a smile on my face and melted my heart. So like I said, I'm, I'm very family-oriented, and I, and I just love to see my mom smile and see her happy, man. That's all. That was the solid thing. The, one of the most important things. Steve, can you talk about your familiarity with the family and how much does that relationship that you have with Abe kind of make you more comfortable with Matt? Uh, the fact that I know Abe and, and actually recruited Abe and he, he uh, played for me uh, certainly made it easy as far as me talking to him, but it really had absolutely no bearing whatsoever on our selection. The selection was really made by a culmination, like you say, a lot of hard work of, of the scouting department and, and uh, Eric and Joe and Ozzie and, and coaches too, TA especially, uh, doing the evaluation process. All that stuff's out the window. The only thing that was nice is when I got the chance to talk to him on the phone, I talked to his mom because I know his mom. And so when, I, when he walked in today and I see him, you know, I already know him and, and I know his brother and I know his mom. That stuff makes it nice, but it really has no bearing on the draft selection itself. And Matt, just out of curiosity, I heard John Bossick was somebody you were extremely close with in Florida. Obviously, there's a need here for inside linebacker. How much have you started that push? I haven't started yet, but I've been thinking about. It. I mean, I want to get at a coach here. I want to get at. A, uh, I would love to play with Bossick again, man. That would that would be that would be great. That would be great. <laughs> Did any of the players come in to meet you or reach out to you after? You um, I met I met a couple of players. So I saw walking through. I met a couple of players. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about meeting a little more. So anyone give you any advice? Uh, no, nah, not yeah. I really haven't talked uh, pretty much. I mean, I talked to Jacoby Jones a couple of weeks ago. We was on uh, NFL Live and we had an interview with uh, Deion Sanders, me and him, and uh, he gave me a little advice on uh, how to cover him, how to how to cover him because he said <laughs> you know, he gave me a little advice. Told me if I put my hands out and try to jam my ear, throw my hands down and get on top of me and things like that, but we were just joking around a little bit, so it was fun. Dina, yeah. Dina the start of the, the offseason when you lose your two starting safeties, can you expect a better scenario than what ends up happening and that you just sign Michael Huff and you draft the safety in the first round here? Uh, no, I mean, obviously when you when you lose a couple of guys, then you're going to go through free agency. You don't really know who's going to be out there, who's not going to be out there, how that's all going to work. Uh, that it comes down to really the draft, and all I can tell you is we couldn't be happier with the selection that we had. I'm just telling you that we we all, I was really sitting there hoping somebody didn't jump up or then somebody didn't jump in and take this guy. I just kept looking at his name up there on the board hoping just hang on, and uh, it's a great scenario for all of us. Matt, we saw online you actually had a draft party scheduled for tonight. Was it just something where uh, maybe you, you didn't give yourself enough credit that you'd be in the first round, or was, um, was the scheduling conflict? No, it was. I, I really wasn't planning on having a draft party. Uh, it was actually John Boston draft party. I just joined on with it. I mean, I really wasn't. I really wasn't really into the draft party thing. So I, I really wasn't planning. Like my brother was on me. Do I want to throw one? I was like, no. Nah, I just had the family to the house. And I just joined with John Boston because he asked me. So it really wasn't anything I really wanted. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.